Okay, I'm going to talk to you about the burnout before my camera actually is going to be on fire in this weather. So I have been freelancing in London for six years, starting from nothing, uh, building my business pretty fast, pretty quickly. And I found myself a lot in a situation where I was about to burn out and I didn't notice or I was ignoring red flags. So I have a couple of tips for you to avoid burnout, to see the red flags. I've written it down, of course, like what to do about it, because basically you don't want to find yourself in the same situation over and over again. That's the point. And also, like you don't want to say no to your clients too often because you want to go extra mile. This is how you build business. But also you have to protect yourself and, you know, you're not going to deliver the best product or service if you are burnout. out. So there has to be a balance of what you do for the client. So tip number one, do not say yes to everything. Literally what I just said, but a couple of things here. Obviously, when you start out the business, you have to say yes to a lot of things. Otherwise, nobody will want to work with you and you have no clients. So you have no choices, really. If you, it's not a problem when you start out because you have like one or two clients. So when they email you, you're quite happy. Like, oh my God, I have work. But if you, it's a problem when you have like 10 or 20 clients and every day they email you or worse, they WhatsApp you late in the evening and so on. I have a couple of examples here. By the way, I'm going to share more on my in my upcoming book because I'm writing a book about freelancing. I'm basically going to tell you like all the secrets, no gatekeeping, how to get clients, how to handle clients and so on. Obviously, once you establish your business, you have to start saying no. And it's going to cost you a little bit of a paycheck, a little bit of money, a little bit of income. Yes, it will. Now you have to ask yourself, do you want to sell and sacrifice your health, mental health and physical health for the money that they offer? Because it's going to happen whether now or in the future. So if you say yes to everything, even if you don't actually need that money, then that's a red flag also. Okay, I'm going to cover more red flags in the next point. But saying yes to everything will put you in a position where the clients will then expect you to say yes to everything all the time. So if you started saying yes in the beginning, this is how the relationship will continue. So prime example, you know, I have received a couple of, I mean, couple, countless of messages at like 7 p.m. or 9 p.m. or 4 p.m. saying like, we need you to edit this webinar, for example. And it has to be ready like by tomorrow morning, like by 12 p.m. or something like that they just said like oh my god like we we have this last minute thing and it, there's a deadline and we apologize it's like so late but can you help us out and I was like yeah okay because I wanted to like really build that relationship and just go that extra mile right so I said yes and then I you know I I was tired the whole day I was training working with my clients I got home instead of going to gym instead of like making dinner, eating healthy, take care of my physical health, which goes hand in hand with mental health. I said yes. And then I found myself editing until like 9 p.m. completely tired, exhausted, making mistakes as well, because like, you know, you're tired. Sending back that project and sometimes, yes, it was true that it was deadline the next day. But many times I found out that actually the deadline was like three days later or even a week later. And this incredibly angered me because basically they just wanted extra points with the boss. Like, oh yeah, we can deliver, you know, earlier. But they cost me like my health, in you know, mental and physical. So essentially like... I helped them get a promotion, but I was screwing myself up. And this was really like a low blow when I found out like the deadline was not actually the next morning. You know, you think like, oh, you know, I'm going to get extra money. I want extra money and so on. In the beginning, yes. Later on, you know, you need to kind of sacrifice that because essentially when you burn out, then you need to pay for vacation in order for you to kind of recover from the burnout. So if you want to save money, like if you want to earn all the money in the world, you will burn out, right? And then you spend that extra money anyway on the vacation because you need to recover. So it's kind of like, it's kind of funny twist, to be honest. So the thing is, what do you say if you don't want to say uh, yes? You say no, of course. 
However, what's going to happen is the client will most probably drop you. If you started saying yes from the beginning of the relationship and then you start saying no all of a sudden, they will be like, why? What's going on? And you're going to say, well, you know, it's last minute. I don't want to do it. And they're going to be like, yeah, but you didn't have a problem to do it like 10 times before. So now what's the problem? It's very hard for them to understand. So most probably they're going to drop you. And this happened to me. So after I draw the line and I was like, I can't do this anymore like that. I wrote to the client explaining that, you know, I'm really tired. This is why I make mistakes. Like I cannot do this last minute every time. And I literally received the message 48 hours, not only 48 hours later, literally it said, hi, Nicole. Okay, no problem. We won't be needing you for editing anymore. That was it. You know, you cannot take it personally. Of course, it kind of hurts, but essentially, like, I saw it coming. So I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. That was very obvious that this is going to happen. So you're going to lose some money. You're going to lose some clients because that's the business. That's how it actually works. Another example is to saying yes. I got inquiry and it was like a huge Instagram influencer and it was their assistant. And they said like, oh, can you, we, can we book you for the full day filming I'm on this day? And I looked in the calendar and I was booked already with a different client and I was like damn this is such a great opportunity because they're like big influencers and like I charged I wanted to charge them a lot and they said yes so I was like damn this is good deal so I talked to my other client that I was booked with and I have very good relationship with them I thought like they're gonna cancel me you know like cancel that date but thankfully they decided to reschedule which was amazing I was so grateful for that but I kind of you know it's not okay to do that if you're a freelancer like you know when you're booked you have to go for it but anyway they understood it they rescheduled great and then what happened the basically prior like 12 hours before the actual filming with the influencer they canceled on me and they didn't pay my booking fee invoice and they literally canceled like we had so much conversation prior to that like they were like this is the only day we need to do it like can you confirm 100% you can do it so much conversation and then they cancel 12 hours before and this is for me it basically backfired because I was greedy and I said yes to that I should not say yes to that right it's also not good when you look available even though I was not available but you know you just have to don't be greedy stay loyal to your main clients don't say yes to everything. Just do what feels good if you can afford it or if you want to afford vacations to recover from burnout, great. But be smart about it. Okay, tip number two is I'm going to share a couple of red flags here. So basically, when you're burning out, you're not really realizing you're burning out. So essentially, you don't kind of see it until it's too late. So I'm going to share some of the red flags there. It goes hand in hand with tip number one, of course. If you are anxious opening your email, essentially like my Monday morning or after a short vacation, like if you literally are anxious about logging in to your email, that's a huge red flag. I have had that so many times. I was just like, it's just an email, like it's ridiculous, but this is how it is. If you get an inquiry from the new client, but you don't feel like actually jumping on the call with them and you want to kind of avoid the contact even though this actually would help you expand your business which you know it's the whole point and then that's a red flag if you don't send invoices for the booking fee or like advance payment essentially you're putting yourself under pressure and stress because some clients pay the invoice until don't pay until the project is finished and it's basically finished when they went through the changes and everything. So you can wait like forever and it just puts you in a very bad spot. So always get 50% upfront for everything. If you're only thinking about doing the projects and working with clients only because you're thinking about money, how much money you're going to earn, that's a red flag as well. So you're not actually looking forward to work with them. And they will kind of sense that as well if you just think about money. So that's if you catch yourself, just this is a red flag as well. How do you know when you actually are burnout already? So you wake up, for example, and you decide not to work today, right? So we don't op open an email and you're basically avoiding 
work in general. So you can go for a coffee, you can go for like a walk, you can go to the cinema, you can sit home, watch Netflix, anything to avoid work. Okay, and you can do this actually for like a couple of days and you feel amazing. You're going to feel great, like, oh my God, this I'm spending the money I earned with hard work. This is amazing. I feel great. The reality is you're just really running away from the responsibilities and running your business because you're burnt out. So it starts very kind of innocent, but that's that's the bottom line. And then you log back in, finally, because you have to, and you see like 50, 60 emails, which are unread, unread, and it triggers you, and then you burn out, like completely anxious state. So what you got to do to essentially avoid the burnout in the first place is you need to rethink your business. So once you establish your business and you have a little bit of money, so we don't have to say yes to everything, then what's going to happen is you need to really rethink your strategy and the whole idea of how you do business so you need to write down all the clients and you need to put them in two columns like non-toxic and toxic clients and then you have to find out like okay can you work without the toxic clients can you drop them the nice way to drop the clients the toxic ones is to increase prices a lot to the point where you kind of know they're going to drop you and if not it's good to consider whether this will actually help you drop other toxic clients, you know, so you kind of pay the price so you can then have less toxic clients. So you need to know kind of what strategy you want to apply. A lot of clients, when you said the, so with the toxic clients, you just all of a sudden can say, okay, I'm not going to do this, just like I did. They may drop you, but there's not really how you can avoid that. So I want you to like imagine, write down like your ideal client, and think about ways you can attract them, right? So like you can manifest them, you can attract them. You need to know how much they're gonna pay you. You need to know preferably like what industry, like try to kind of like imagine it and visualize your clients, your perfect client, and then you're gonna attract them, right? You need to work on your marketing as well. You need to set the precedence. Like I am super busy. This is what I do all the time. I'm so good at it. Don't waste my time. I'm not going to be able to do anything, you know, last minute because I'm just super busy. Like, it just reminds me of one of my business contacts as well. He had like a car accident and he shared a picture on social media. He was like in a hospital, all like bandages. He looked like he can barely breathe. And he sure shared a picture of him being on his laptop, trying to type with one hand. And the caption said like, this is what I do for my clients. Like, always hustle, never stop. Like nothing's going to stop me hustle. And I'm like, this is how essentially people will become like alcoholics, drug addicts, food addicts, because you need to escape at some point in your life. You will need to escape this. You cannot, this is not sustainable. So obviously if you're freelancing, you need to love what you do and then you can go extra mile. But you really need to ask yourself, what is it exactly that I want to do and I love doing? And this is what I'm going to focus on. And if you feel like you cannot handle all the clients, then do what I do, right? Like start affiliate marketing, do blogging, social media, YouTube, like all that stuff that gives you like a side income. So you can rely on that if you start losing some clients or if you have some toxic clients that you cannot deal with anymore. Um, this takes time, obviously, but yeah, try to, what well, what helps me, obviously, as you can see, is not to stay locked in, in the office nine to five, because, you know, the whole point of me freelancing is to be able to enjoy freedom. So basically, it's really good to kind of like get out of the office. I, what I've done was like, I'm trying to become a digital nomad so I want to work from everywhere anywhere anytime and I took my business fully online even as a videographer so I kind of shifted a little bit I mean a little bit more Um, and this works for me like I drop toxic clients obviously cut down a lot of my income this way but I'm so happy and as you can see I'm in a absolutely beautiful place you gotta do what makes you feel good, what makes you feel comfortable. If it's like becoming digital nomad like me, fine. But you need like side income, you need to kind of shift your business a little bit. And if you want to stay where you are, you can do that, but just kind of maybe try to change the pace, but draw boundaries. That's the bottom line of 
of this video and it's difficult I know but you have to ask yourself the bottom line will be do you want to be selfish and in a good way like taking care of your well-being and still delivering like high experience to your client high quality products or service of course or do you want to become like burnout say yes to everything and longevity and sustainability of your business is um, at stake here so completely up to you but i'm telling you burning out the more you burn out the more often you burn out like you if you push all these things away right you sweep it under the carpet you start burning out more often so then you need more vacations and more often so trust me like i have been doing this and for example you burn out for the first time and then it's like okay i'm just gonna take a break so we go for a vacation a week two weeks three weeks whatever and then you recharge and reset and then you come back and you're like now i'm like energized to work on the project you know now i'm ready for you clients again like you know i'm not gonna disappoint you you're all full of energy but guess what within like four weeks five six weeks you burn out again and you need another vacation and then you recharge again and then you come back and you'll be like oh my god this is great i'm back you know I want to do this and then it's going to keep happening until it's going to happen every week right so you first experience this like within a couple of weeks or months but then it starts recurring until you actually solve it not just put it aside you need to solve it think about it if you found this video helpful you can also consider if you want to support me with the thanks button through youtube or you can go to my paypal and tip me or whatever like you know i'm trying to make this here so i'm trying to help you with the content and sharing my experience and don't forget to subscribe follow me on social media because i'm gonna keep updating you on my book that I promised you. So it's really going to be great. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, but I will reply comments only from people that are subscribed, yeah? Or you can also join my premium content on YouTube if you get the membership here on my channel. Um, you're gonna see more videos from me.